Hello and welcome to the Samui Swine Classic presented by Dynamic Discs. I'm Nate Perkins and I'm joined here with four-time world champion Paige Pierce. Hello. We're going to have a brief interview with the reigning champ Nico LaCastro. I'm the Disc Golf Guy and this is my video blog. We're just about to kick things off here. This PDGA A tier in Thailand and Nico LaCastro for the third year in a row is here and this year he's trying to defend the title. Nico, what are we going to say out here? I mean, we're, uh, we're in a beautiful place. We're out here in Koh Samui, Thailand, and as you could tell, Nigel Mills, the tournament director, has put in a lot of work on, on his beautiful course in his backyard. We got fruit smoothies, you know, before and after your round. It's a very friendly, loving environment out here, and uh, just stoked to, to be a part of the international disc golf scene over in Thailand. Well, everyone's about to watch this round, which has four countries represented. Over 20 are here for the weekend. What's that experience like? I couldn't tell you how stoked I am just to represent the United States and, uh, and, and be a part of the disc golf progression over here in Asia. All right, Nico. Well, they're about to watch the action. What do you have to say? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is the Disc Golf Guy, and I'm super stoked to just, uh, you know, try to put on a show today. All right, he's going to try and defend that title here in Koh Samui. Thanks. All right, we'll Perfect. see you next time. Thank you for that, Nico. Hole one is uh, pretty straightforward, shortest hole on the course. We've got this triple mando here that we're flying through. Just a couple trees to miss, one little palm tree you need to get by. But a good one you want to start with, and we have four players from four different countries on this card. Pretty That's cool. right, Nico Lacasso representing the USA. Got with that. a Nova, right? I think that was a Nova. Classic Nico approach. Next up we have Chang, who is from South Korea. Wow. People travel all over for this tournament. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, there's 20 countries represented in, in the, this, the swine this year. Pretty amazing. Jesse from Austria. That's awesome. He's got this one a little turned over. Looks like it's hooking back up though. Sweet dreads though. Yeah, and inside the circle. Both pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and Tomas, oh no, Tomas is from New Zealand and he's found one of the Mando trees. Luckily he did not miss the Mando though, so he should still be able to save par. Ooh, but he left himself a tester kind of. Yeah, it's kind of bringing back quite a few memories uh, seeing this video right now. Paige and I both played the swine in 2018, and it was a pretty magical experience, honestly. It was so awesome. Just landing, getting to the course, and seeing all these palm trees. So pretty. Yeah, the airport, the Koh Samui airport, I don't think I'll ever forget. It's just like like beach huts. Yeah, the best <laughs> airport I've ever been to. So Chang from 15 feet. Oh, oh all three left. players missed their putts. Maybe a little bit of nerves playing with Nico, you think? Yeah, there's probably some some nerves going on. I mean, not Being only on is camera. he, a, yep, yep. Not only is Nico a a top player, but he can be pretty intimidating as well. Yeah, I can if, see that. If you don't know him, if you do, you know he's just a softy. <laughs> So Tomas going to take a bogey, Nico the birdie, and the other two walk away with pars. Hole two, this one is so pretty. The grass is just pristine. Look at that. 300 feet. Gets a little tight here toward the end. There's a few different options. A lot of people like to opt for a forehand play to kind of pick one of those late gaps. Looks like Nico's lining up just that. Little Anheuser forehand with a stable disc. Oh, just uh, a tiny bit high. Oh, and Chang just got that one turned over a little bit too much into the ground. Next up's Jesse. That one's flipping up nice for him. He's nice. gonna have a putt from over there. 
he will be happy with that. This is kind of like a bonus par three to get, I feel like. It's, it's definitely one of the tougher ones on the course. We're going for the lone backhand here from Tomas. Let's see. Nice. Oh, and that looks pretty. Got a good reaction and a good roll. I think he's going to be putting as well. He might even be CTP. Chang with a pretty tricky approach here. Oh, that looked like a pretty good reaction. Right next to the pin, there's this like big mound that kind of like blocks a lot of the shots that you see Nico having to put around right now. I feel like Nico was just like born for this tournament. Yes. I feel like my favorite Nico I've ever experienced is Thailand Nico. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he just pretty much did not have a shirt on unless he was in the tournament. <laughs> it's riding around on the motorbikes. Oh, hello. Hard to commit when you have those palm fronds up, up there, you know, you don't want to get it too high and hit the branch. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting because when when you go to Thailand, you're not really, you know, you're you're going for vacation. Mm -hmm. You know, you you're going for a vacation, but at the same time, when when it's when it's tournament time, I mean, this is an A tier. So when it, when it's time for the actual tournament, you have to like gather your focus and everything. And you can tell. I mean, Nico missed that putt, and it mattered to him. He yeah, might, he might definitely. be on vacation, but he's he's still going to be passionate about each and every hole, each and every shot. It's pretty cool to see that balance from Nico, especially out at Thailand where he thrives, like you said. Hole three sponsored by Dude. Um, this one's actually pretty tricky. It's got quite a, quite a lot of OB. There's OB left, OB right, and OB deep at the pin too. It's kind of like a little island hole and there's a drop zone right there if you do find yourself OB. The drop zone, probably what, like a 60 foot putt? Yeah, maybe so, yep. I actually saw Philo make it last year, threw it OB and then made it. Nice. So it looks like Jesse is lining up the forehand. Just gotta miss that tree and it does. And he's safe on the island. See a couple chickens back there. I do remember quite a few chickens on <laughs> <Yeah>. the course. <laughs> There was even water buffalo. There was. was there cool. was some water buffalo. All right, Tomas again with a backhand, this time with a Nova. Looks to be safe. Yeah, I think that's safe. Yeah. Looks like Nico's lining up a Nova putter shot as well. It's a good line and a little good tree kick he's safe and inside the circle Let's see what Chang's got for us you know he's got kind of like a little monobu swing going yeah. on Can you notice that page yeah super long reach back uh -huh. and, and super methodical smooth, too yeah, yeah. It's always interesting to see what what players influence what what players in in their different uh, the different countries that they're from. You know, Chang's from Asia, and you can definitely tell that he's got some some influence from one of the best Asian players all time, Manabu. Oh, just low from Jesse. This is tester range for Nico. Looking to get to two down. And he does. Good putt, just over the rim. You know, there's some homemade baskets, but they caught pretty good when we played. I thought so too. Yeah. I didn't find really any issue with them. Some some heavy chains, some pretty good baskets, and 
honestly, it's just amazing that there's even baskets here. I mean, this is, Kosamui is a small island um, in the very south of Thailand, in the Gulf of Thailand. And yeah, it's just amazing that, that there's disc golf here, mm -hmm. honestly. I mean, it's truly a paradise. We are on the hole four, which is sponsored by Yukin. That's your new, they make this many discs now, right? That's right. Sweet. That's right. Disc golf company out of China. Pretty excited about the opportunities that China brings to the table. That's awesome. It this, looks like this, this is, is a new hole. This right? is a new hole. It's definitely a new hole. Looks like a nice little tight window. Making good use of the of the trees that they have on their property. Nico looks to be going with the sidearm here. Yeah, he's been working on that sidearm side arm over the past few years, and he's getting pretty good with it. Yeah, it's a good choice on this hole. It looks like just keep it low and fast and towards the basket. Needs to get the skip. And he just got, his last couple forehands have just been a little hot, a little too much wrist, and turned over into the ground. Looks like four, forehands the, sh the shot to be on hole four. And that's looking nice. Gets yeah, the he's skip. Got a good one. And he's going to have a putt. He threw a great one on hole two as well. Tomas with his first sidearm of the round. Mm -hmm. Looks like Tomas found a late tree. Chang's got a pretty tricky approach, but he makes good work and he's inside the circle. Oh, jump putt. A little wide. A little wide. Good bid. All right. Circle's edge putt for Jesse. Looks like it's a little windy. You see Jesse's shirt blowing a little bit right there. Yeah. All right. Ooh. Great looking putt. Big one. Oh, He's yeah. That was in. outside the circle for sure. All of 40 feet right there. Great putt, Jesse. Chang to save par. That was a huge one from Jesse. That's going to be a good little confidence boost, you know? It's not even a third of the way through the round, and when you hit one like that, it just makes you feel good. Yeah, it is always nice to get one in early. I seem to have those nerves until I get that first, first putt locked in. All right, hole five. 626 foot par four. This is one that we recognize. Looks like we're flying over the landing zone right about now. And then you've got this tunnel of palm trees. And the pin is tucked right around here to the corner. It's a great looking hole sponsored by the Thailand Disc Golf Club. Man, did they have some sweet shirts last time we were there. Yeah, they did. Philo still wears it. Yeah. <laughs> Still wears it all over the place. He's wearing it at Vegas. Nice. All right, Jesse earned the box. Let's see what he does here. Awesome late flip. And he got the green. I like what they've done with this hole. They redesigned this one a little bit as well. And it looks to be a, a genuine two shot hole. Good looking tee pad as well. Mm -hmm. Nice and flat. They're doing good work out there in Thailand. And Nico gets a hold of this forehand. I think he's gonna have a pretty good straight window from over there. Next up is Chang. Ooh, good angle. Hopefully it keeps turning. Yeah, great disc choice. 
I really hope we get to see Nigel in this video. Remember <laughs> when we were playing Nigel just like all around the course watching? Making the pig feast for the players. Oh my goodness. Some of the best barbecue. So good. And like Nico was saying in his interview like about the smoothies, fresh smoothies right before yeah. and after your round. <laughs> Thailand it has just an abundance of fruit. All the vendors along the streets, all the little, all the little food trucks, if you yeah. can even call them that, the little food carts. There's so many smoothie options. One of my favorite parts about Thailand, honestly, was just being able to get a fresh coconut and a Whenever avocado smoothie just any time of the day for pennies on the dollar as well. looking release on the forehand just a little wide catches a branch quite a bit different than Nico's sidearm he just threw that was nice and high Jesse's got a flat release like Nate just said it looks really smooth Tomas just has that a little wide oh but it punches through and comes back it looks like he's gonna have a putt from there uh, <laughs> there's the chickens that we're talking about oh that's great footage Terry and Chong finally corrects on that forehand, gets that one flat up into the air. Looks like he's in the circle. Wow, yeah, you're right. The wind is picking up. It's totally a windy day here in Thailand. Oh. All right. Jesse got it up there, but left himself with this. Looks like he's got a headwind putt as well. Ooh. Oh yeah, and that wind just kind of holds that disc up in the air and it's just a little high. Nico for birdie. Great looking putt from Nico. Okay, looks like that was for par, perhaps. Excuse me, that's a par from Nico. I wish that I could hear what he was saying right now. <laughs> oh, he's such a passionate player. A lot of the times it gets a little misinterpreted, but he's got the good intentions. And there's a dog. <laughs> oh, looks like a like a wild dog. And Jesse's chasing off the dog for us. Oh, this is great. This is this is fantastic. All right, thank Jessie. you, Jesse. Good work. You're the man. Jane, you can putt now. Oh, wait, there's another oh, dog. Dog number two. <laughs> oh, and with the focus, Chang puts it down for a birdie. It's a good birdie on a 626 par four through the palm trees. Definitely. And on that first shot, there used to be a key. If you didn't turn it enough, what, did it look like any on this one? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I... Either I missed one of Nico's shots or he was OB off of off of his okay. drive. So there might still be OB back there. Alright, let's see. Jesse tapping in a bogey. And we are on to hole six. So this is uh, a hole that you can you can either try and go for. Um, there's an OB line halfway up the fairway, and you can try and flex it over that OB line that we are flying over right now. Or you can play it short and then play for your three. 456 feet. It's quite hard to two. Shane taking the box. Ooh, that was He's a got great a good looking line release. on this. Does he have the distance? Doesn't look like he quite got it there, but he should have like a relatively easy approach or a jump putt. Ma 
Moss also with a good looking line. Perfect amount of flex, full flight out of that one. Looks like he's 50, maybe 60 feet short of the pin. Let's see what Nico for us. Looks like he's gonna torque on something over Sable. He's got that, that's just the, the classic Nico throw, isn't it? Yeah, I've seen him throw that line quite a few times. Yeah, he loves over stable discs. I think he's gonna try and go left of that first palm that we see right there, and he is. Ah, oh, and he just got this one a little too low. It's fun to see those when they work out. You yeah, know? no doubt. Oh, Jesse follows Nico on the left side. His just a little too though. turned over. Yeah. It's definitely windy. You can tell that the wind is affecting these players. Looks like just a beautiful day on Costa Movie, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't remember a, a bad day on the island, honestly. Oh. Every morning we got to to uh, to get on our our scooters and and cruise up to this course every morning of the tournament. That is, and I don't know if I've had more fun ever. <laughs> it's so fun, and you just pull into the course and you see, you know. 50 to 100 other motorbikes that yeah <laughs> everybody that just rented one and it's really cool everybody's just cheesing too everyone just hugs and smiles we met so many people from different countries it was really honestly, it was amazing and refreshing um to go to a disc golf tournament where we didn't recognize really anybody oh and chang off the top band but in in for par but yeah wasn't it nice to to kind of meet a lot of new faces and, and see how Disc Off has uh, kind of grown to all the different parts of the world. Yeah, definitely. Oh, Jesse misses one, and he will be tapping in for another bogey. Nico taking his time on this one. Definitely must be windy. I see those chains blowing a little bit. I see the shadow of that palm tree blowing. Good looking putt. And like you said, it's like he's on vacation, but he's also taking these so seriously, and it's nice yeah. to see. He's also kind of known for taking his time on those he short is. ones. A lot of people, a lot of people like to give him uh, give him trouble for how long he takes on those uh, fifteen footers. But <laughs> hey, if they go in, that's what matters. Do what you got to do. Hole 7, sponsored by Songs from a Suitcase. Love that. 345 foot par 3. This one, you want to miss. There's one main tree right in the middle that got me every time on the year prior. Yeah, you've really got to pick your line on this one. It looks like... Chang's line up the, the Annie route. Yep. Oh, it looks like a Mando now. Is that a Mando? Yeah, it looks like they've done a little work on the course yeah. since, since we've last been there. It's it's cool to see these new holes. They look they look a little bit more challenging than last year. They're using like different parts of the land too, it looks like. If they implemented the use of those trees on a few holes ago. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's a good looking shot from Tomas. See if Nico can correct on on his last Anheuser drive. I really hope he grows his hair back. I know just saw a video from like 2013 and it was full afro mode and it was just amazing it was quite big yeah great looking shot from nico he does correct gets that one high enough to flex out jesse's just killing it with these dreadlocks though Oh, doesn't quite get it past 
The Mando tree. Okay, so yeah, he is throwing from a drop zone. Look at that wind blowing his shirt. Oh, yeah, and you can see the wind just gets up underneath that disc and just kind of pushes it over into the right. Chang from about 60. Oh, good Very looking close. bid. Nico from just inside the circle. Looks like he's lining up a little bit more input compared to his normal. Looks like he's gonna try and stab this one through the wind. <laughs> put it, Nico, put it. You got it. Okay, oh. he gets that one up. Excuse it looked like he me, changed that... his la his mind at the last moment. He he it kind of did look yeah. like he changed his mind. Looked like he was going to stab it at first, but he goes with the traditional La Castro putt and gets that one up and in. Tomas. Oh, great putt from Tomas. It's a nice birdie. Jesse is on the bogey train right now. He needs to jump off. Not the best train to be on, especially at this course. You really don't want a bogey. No. Let alone three in a row. All right, hole eight. 312 foot par three. Got a tight gap and tunnel all the way down. I really like this green right here. There's a nice little creek that runs behind the green. Some sand to slow your disc down. Yeah, to, this is a tough line to hit and so to do so you kind of want it to be coming a little quick but then it risks that risk of going OB deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's OB deep and there's also OB left if you hyzer out too early. Definitely one of the trickier par threes on the course. Mm -hmm. Nico oh, doesn't turn right it there. over. Yeah. That might find that left OB. That's it. We will see. Chang lining up another forehand. Let's see if he can give this one enough height to ride out. Plenty of height, stable discs. Wow, very stable. It's like a Firebird or something. That was a stable Frisbee. Mm -hmm. Jesse with the backhand. A little too much hyzer, gets one of those palm trees. Left himself this to get up and down for a par. Kind of looked like one of your discs. Yeah. A little burst marshal or something. Maybe. Nico's got a kind of window over there. Yeah, he's got a look. He just hit a big one on the last hole. Let's see what he's got for us on this one. Oh. <laughs> We've seen that a few times. Like we said, he's still bringing the passion. We're in Thailand, but it is an A-tier, PGA-sanctioned A-tier. I feel like that's exciting to watch, you know, when you know if this is given their all. Uh -huh. All right, two birdies in a row from Tomas. That drive was awesome. Good looking putt from Jesse. Yeah, if, you, if you're even considering traveling to traveling internationally to play disc golf, this is, this is definitely something that you should put on your calendar. 
Uh, it was my first international trip, even. Uh, Paige and I flew to Singapore, then flew from Singapore straight to the island. Um, and it's, it's something that I don't think I'll, I'll ever forget, mm -hmm. traveling to Thailand to not only play disc golf, but to see the country, the beautiful country of Thailand. And I mean, you can't really say enough great things about, about the people and the, just the whole experience yeah. of the whole event. Yeah. Beautiful beaches. If you love food, it's good. Uh, some of the best options food. Options. Some of the best cheap. food and very cheap. Very mm -hmm. affordable trip. Put this one on the map. Chang looking to throw the sidearm. Speaking of Chang, that was our favorite beer when we were there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Shang beer. <laughs> I still rock my Shang beer shirt every now and then. But yeah, it's like 50 cents a beer. <laughs> we did not drink while we played. <laughs> Don't worry, Mom. <laughs> All right, another sidearm coming up here. Oh, he doesn't quite commit. It looks like they put a mando on it this time, so you, yeah. can, you can't sneak right at that palm tree. <laughs> Makes that hole just a little bit tougher. He made the mando, but did not make the so he's left with a very long look. At least he's off the bogey train though, you know? Yeah. <laughs> All right, Nico, let's see. Another 30 foot tester in the wind. See if he can knock another one down. Yeah, and you know Tomas just went birdie birdie and he's sitting closer than Nico, so I think Nico's thinking about that. Yeah, maybe so. He's probably got a few things going on in his head right now. <laughs> oh. And he hated it as soon as it left his hand. Yeah, good looking putt from Chung. Nice hit from Jesse to save par. All right, and Moss going for his third birdie in a row. Got it. Very nice. After hitting the Mando, bear, the triple Mando on hole one, I wasn't expecting to see a turkey from him. Yeah, that was a good, good stretch of birdies right there. Great looking putt from 20 feet in the wind. Hole 10. 197 foot par three. Another short technical one. Yeah, super short little hyzer. All right, another new hole. Nigel and Riley and Luke have all been putting in some work on the redesign. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Tomas goes just a bit too wide. He's trying to spike one down and hits a barrier tree on the right side. There's that Manabu swing. Looks like he's found the gap. Pin high, maybe 30 feet to the right. Nico with a different approach. He's looking like he's trying to get a low skip. Swinging that stable airway out there. All right, it looks like it might be pretty hot. Jesse keeps wiping off his fingers on that towel. Yeah, I, I remember using my whale sack quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Especially 
you know, mo most people that are traveling here this time of year are trying to escape some some of the colder weather weather back home. So they're uh, not used to the heat coming. Yeah, here. you yeah. go from you know you go from freezing at home to I, it was ninety degrees on the island every day. All right, Nico with twenty twenty five footer. Come on, Nico, put it. Put it, brother. <laughs> put it in. How many putters is he holding? <laughs> Please in put it in hand? the basket. Oh, oh. <laughs> Another reset. Okay. Here we go. No. Nope. Oh. You think he ever thinks too much? Absolutely. He absolutely has been overthinking it for, for many years. <laughs> uh, have you seen him practice putt? No. When he practice putts, he is probably the best putter in the world. He can just put it up and in the basket from any distance as many times as he want, wants. And as soon as he gets into that tournament zone, he's just been overthinking it. Everyone else knows it. And honestly, he knows it too. <laughs> He just can't seem to stop. Yeah, and I mean, he's still a 1030 golfer, still one of the best disc golfers in the world. Don't get me wrong, but he knows what he needs to do to put mm -hmm. it in the basket. A little right. bit of frustration right there. We got one hole left on this front, 11 holes. This one's sponsored by Nigel. Nigel's Barbecue and Catering. It's good stuff. It's so good. It was so good. I mean, he he, he had a whole pig, right? Uh-huh. He, he smoked a whole pig. Yeah. And right after you finish this hole, you got it waiting on you. It's pretty nice. Tomas with a sidearm. Hits the gap, and he's way up there. Thing with a good stable side arm. Looks like I got a pretty good reaction off the tree to keep it close to the basket. Oh, this is a little shorty. Nico just popping that forehand out there. Looks like he's parked. There. Yeah, it does. Last up was Jesse, also with the sidearm. Ooh, he hated it. A little high. Kiss some cabbage. It's knocked down. Yeah, so if I remember right, we actually play the Quice. Yes. Correct? So these players are going to be playing 22 holes today. And they just loop back around and play the same 11 holes again. It's kind of fun because you get to try to correct on your mistakes from mm -hmm. the first round. Or to just throw the shot you already threw, but just a little bit better. Yeah, it's not very often in a same tournament that you get the chance to play the the same hole in the in the same round. Actually, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever done that before. This might be the one and only tournament I've ever done that at. But yeah, it's a pretty cool deal. You get to I mean, if you miss one of the easy birdies, you get to come come back and give it another go. Yeah, and doing them back to back, it, the hole's fresh on your mind and you know the minor adjustment you might need to make. And Thomas fought back on the on the front eleven to come back for a respectable five down. Well, thank you guys for joining us for the front eleven. Again, I'm Nate Perkins. And I'm Paige Pierce. Tune in for the back eleven holes. <laughs>